Hello Crochet Slaway followers and welcome newcomers. In this video we'll be doing some recycling, turning some plastic grocery bags into plastic yarn, also known as plarn. This will be cut in the spiral method. If you are interested in learning the loop method, you'll find a link in the description below for a video for that. The spiral method is a little more difficult. You won't be cutting all the way through the bag at first like you do for the loop method. And then we have to use a little bit of thinking to cut across this part right here. But I'll show you how to do that. Before we start, I'll show you quickly. If you have bags that have holes in them, such as this, you could still recycle what's left of the bag there and make plarn out of that, but there's not much there. This may be better thrown in the recycling bin. And I will be showing you how I cut more than one bag at a time with my rotary cutter. It helps me save time. But for the spiral method, you can't continue cutting all the bags that way. I'll also show you how to join the strands together if you want to make a lot of material ahead of time and roll it all into a ball. Instead of doing that, you could cut one bag at a time and then just yarn over with the new strand and work in the tails. I'll show you the easiest way to straighten out a bag to get it ready for cutting. Sorry about the noise. Stick your thumb in the handle and stick a thumb in the seam or your fingers if you'd rather do that. It helps if this part is to the inside when you do this, but you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to fix it. Just give it a pull and it flattens itself out. See if I don't do that on this side and I just go like that, it still folds inside there. You might get one once in a while that fights you. And the first thing we need to do is remove the top and the bottom of the bag to create one tube of plastic. It's a lot easier if you fold the bag up first. It gives you a smaller area to hang on to and make sure you cut below the seam where the handles are attached. And on the bottom side, make sure you cut above the seam where the bottom is molded together. Because if you don't cut that, let's see if I can do it really close here. And I won't cut that all the way through. When you try to open it up. Nope, I got it anyways. That bag didn't have much of a seam on it. Some of them have seams that go farther up, and when you don't cut high up enough, it won't open up like that. You'll know it when you do it. Now the best thing to do is to fold it up as tightly as possible. It just makes it easier to cut, but you do not have to be very technical about doing this. Leave an area across the top that you do not fold up. That's the spot we won't be cutting through. And then fold it again and fold it again and I even fold it again. <laughs> and the material I'll be making is about an inch wide. That would be two and a half centimeters, if I'm correct. Okay. 
and you cut all the way across the bag in what I think of as chunks. I don't know why I think of it that way, but I do. And you don't have to worry about straightening all these out. Once you're done cutting the whole bag, it'll open up. For now, you just need to be able to open up this area that you did not cut through. And if you cut closer, you can see that I have quite a lot of area here that I need to cut through. If you cut closer up to that top, you'll start getting a jagged edge in your cuts, but once you work up the material, that doesn't matter. I've left an extra amount here for the purpose of the video, so you can better see how to cut it. I'm going to try to make sure here that this is in the best light and the best focus as possible for a start. The only time you will cut to the outside of this area is for the first cut. That's it. From the bottom here up to the inside of this cut here. Don't cut across here and remove that strand. Cut at an angle. Begin next to this strand and cut at an angle towards that first cut. Now you can watch it unravel. And like I said, that is the only time you will cut to the outside. Each cut from there goes from the inside to the next inside, from the bottom to the top, always. From the bottom to the top. And it continues in that fashion the whole way down the back until you get to the end. And you can see this is why the way you have to cut this, it doesn't work to stack bags on top of each other. I have tried it. And what you have to do is put bags inside of each other in order to cut them all at the same time this way without cutting through the strands behind it. And I am crazy enough that I attempted to do it. I put bags inside of bags and it was a fight to cut through them and keep them together and keep them straight the whole time. And it wasn't worth it at all. You can cut a lot of bags at one time using the loop method. And you can prepare a lot of bags at one time for the spiral method like I'll show you in just a moment. But you cannot stack them on top of each other and cut them that way. And you see, once it's all cut up wherever you didn't unfold, if you roll the material up or if you want to just leave it in a pile while you work it up, you don't have to spend too much time fixing that there. So let me get my rotary cutter and my mat back out, and I will be back in just a moment. We'll cut a pile of bags. See you soon. Before I begin with this, I'd like to give you a little warning. If you have never used a rotary cutter before, I would not start with this. Get used to the feel of it first. Cut some fabric. Do one bag at a time. Maybe not a lot like this. And this isn't even a lot. I only have five stacked right here. I have done as many as 20 at a time this way. Although, I will show you how I fold it over. It makes it easier to cut it. But, when I tell you I have done 20 bags at one time this way, I only did about 20 bags 10 times before I completely dulled my blade and had to buy a new one. So, less might be more. 
right? I'm going to try to straighten this out a little bit here. I'm sorry, I'm shaking you around. Especially a rotary cutter like this one that does not have a guard on it for your hand. You have to be careful because it can catch in the plastic. And also, mind where your fingers are. It pops up and you want to hold it down, but you don't want to hold it down. You don't want your fingers there. Cut the tops. Cut the bottoms. And this is where it doesn't go so quickly because in order to cut it for the spiral method, if you were cutting it for the loop method, you could just cut, 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 and be done. But to cut it for the spiral method, you have to sit here and open them all up. That way you don't cut into that middle, what's often referred to as a spine that's left on the bag. So I'm not going to sit here and show you the whole method all over again. You would open up all these bags and you would fold them all together and then you could cut them into the chunks before you have to use the scissors to cut them all individually. It does help save some time, but in the end, you still have to cut them singly. All right, I will grab my material and for the last bit of the video, I'll show you quickly a little trick how you can join it together if you'd like to know that. See you soon. And remember, the joining method here is optional. While you're working, you can just pull the new strand through a stitch like you would join a new color or a new strand of yarn. This is what I like to call the splice method. It allows me to keep all of my plarn together so that I can roll it all into a nice center pull ball. I like to make a lot ahead of time for a project. So this is what I'm doing here. Fold it over, give it a couple of inches, and cut right down the middle. Now, you take the end of one strand and you run it through the slit of the other strand until the cut in that one is past the cut in this one. Then bring the tail of, this is the tail of the second strand, not the ball end, bring the tail back through the cut that's in the ball end. And if you want to take that just a step farther, you see how it wants to go in one direction. You can take it just a step farther and make it nice and straight by pulling it just a little so that it settles so you can find that cut again. And bring this tail through it and to the other side. Now you have your plarn spliced together. Ooh, I broke it. If I hadn't have broke it right there, it would stay together. I should not have pulled it that hard. I'm not even gonna go back and fix this video. I will leave that there so you can see what will happen. What I'm making here is quite thin for a project I have in mind. And this is something different than the giant plarn that I've been working with that you can see in the video I made for the loop method. So I suppose I have some fixing to do here now, but there's not much left to learn other than don't pull it that hard. 
thicker material if you cut it wider than that. It takes quite a lot of abuse, but when it's only an inch wide and it's thin like this, you have to be gentle. Well, while I continue putting my plarn back together, I will end the video. If you've liked the tutorial here today, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. You can follow me over on the Crochet is the Way blog. You can find Crochet is the Way on Facebook. And you can find me, myself, on Google+. Go ahead and join the Crochet is the Way community over there and you can share your projects too. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching and happy crocheting.